This video is the story of my $199 mini Harbor Freight trailer. Well, it's the story so far because I'm still dragging it around everywhere. Back in 2008, I finally got my own dirt bike. It was an actual dream come true. All I ever wanted to do was ride that thing and break bones on it. But when I got that bike, I had pretty much put the cart before the horse because I didn't have any way to get it anywhere, which meant that being able to go ride was completely dependent on being picked up by someone else in their truck. And that was really frustrating. But eventually, I got a Ford Exploder. And with a hitch carrier attached to that Ford Exploder, I happily spent my days riding the dirt bike instead of attending college classes like I was signed up to do. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, the Ford Exploder bit the dust after less than 3,000 miles of having me behind the wheel. That transmission had like maybe 125,000 on it and it just said no more, which is pretty sad. And then for another five years, I was back in a car and I pretty much didn't do much riding because of that. Until these little baby Harbor Freight trailers for $199 caught my eye. So small, so light, so cheap, so very accessible to a broke ass like me. So I bought one. I bolted a rail to it to carry a dirt bike and I started towing that thing everywhere with my little Kia. The internet told me the trailer would explode violently, it would flip over on every corner and I would be causing death and destruction immeasurable. But they were wrong. Instead, it was just a massive improvement to my life. I was kind of getting out of dirt biking because it was so inaccessible until I got that trailer and that thing made dirt biking great again because I could drag that thing around on my Kia literally still getting 40 miles per gallon and still only accruing the costs of running that tiny compact car, which is just so low. And that cost of running, being able to get to and from riding places for literally just a couple bucks was very attractive. And soon I had people asking, do you think you could fit another bike on that trailer? Which was an opportunity to split those already tiny gas expenses, and I did not hesitate. I bolted another rail to that trailer, and then it could hold two. And for a long time, just like that, I let the good times roll. That trailer was a workhorse. I used it to transport bikes, all freaking over the place while I built this channel. I even lugged around huge bikes on occasion. I actually don't know exactly how many miles I put on the trailer during that time because I stopped counting at 25,000. Because it was at that point that I figured, yeah, I've probably got my money's worth out of this little $199 trailer. Of course it wasn't perfect during those initial workhorse years. There are issues with these things. Namely, the fenders and the lighting might as well be made of styrofoam. They will literally break off just from wind buffeting or hitting potholes. And that's not an exaggeration. The fenders and the lighting kit that come stock for that trailer in the kit are crap. And I wouldn't recommend using it at all. So that stuff broke off early. Fortunately, nobody was ever behind me for that. Um, had I known that they were such crap, I would not have run them. Um, I would have just used them for the inspection and then either upgraded or got rid of that stuff that comes with it. Now that I'm doing the mobile living thing out of my 4Runner, I've been using the trailer again full time everywhere I go, but I've kind of adapted it to this different role. When I set off in the Yoda home, I decided that I would shrink the trailer load down to one bike again and then use the other available space to carry other things. So at first I was just carrying like my generator, bike stand, and then like an oil disposal jug. But that slowly evolved into carrying more and more. Eventually I decked half the trailer and then I was stacking bins and tying those bins down. But I had problems with the bins getting hot and I just didn't like the fact 
that anyone could come up and just jack my bins if I left the trailer alone too long, which at first was not a problem because I was mostly always with the Yoda home with the trailer. But then it was actually during the Rocky Mountain 24-hour uh, race challenge where they got a hotel room for me and then my rig was parked in the hotel parking lot with just those bins just strapped and I did my best with like the cable locks that I have. Cable locked the heck out of them, but it took a good 30 minutes when I was tired and just wanted to go, go to sleep. After that experience, I was like, just never again. I don't want to have to organize the bins to then cable lock them and just no. So it has evolved into the current setup which is a setup that I've been really, really happy with. So here is the current configuration. I have relocated my spare tire to the tongue, the little mini tongue. I have the bike still on one of those bike carrier rails. I just found myself having an abundance of those things laying around for some reason, uh, which is why I used them on the trailer to begin with. And yeah, I just keep reconfiguring it on the trailer however I need it. And right now you can see I just have it mounted perpendicular. It works well. The only problem with having it mounted perpendicular is you have to be careful where you park or else you could find yourself not being able to get the bike off as opposed to having the bike just roll on from the from the front or rear. That was always very easy. And then just beside the, the rail right there, I just have some plywood bolted to the trailer frame and that's just where I store whatever. For this last trip there was two fuel cans stored right there. The trailer is still on the original axle, on the original bearings, and the only thing that I have really changed about the whole axle is Early on, I added those grease caps, bearing buddy grease caps, uh, which just makes it a little bit easier to add grease, but also it like feeds the grease in as the grease splatters out the other side. They are doing just fine. I obviously have no problems with the bearings. Yeah, they don't get hot. And it's rather impressive that these bearings have held up just fine and are still silky smooth and tight after 50,000 miles, 50,000 recorded miles, because if I'm doing 60 in the vehicle, then these things are spinning at a rate that would be equivalent to those wheels spinning at over 200 miles per hour. A lot of people said the bearings were crap on these. I don't know about that. Maybe I got lucky, but they are freaking awesome on this one. And then you can see I have these two DeWalt job site boxes and they are just carriage bolted to the, the trailer. The trailer is lined with plywood and then they are bolted through the plywood. These things have helped out a lot because they're obviously very large. You can fit a ton of crap in there. And let me just show you what I've got in there. Absolutely do not get these Harbor Freight locks. The money that you save on buying them will only be spent on all the lubricant that you will use to keep them going because they are garbage. They're also very unsecure. I have two different sets of them and the keys from each, although they are different, they will open any of the locks. I've got my two fold out solar panels, a 60 watt and a 100 watt, and that effectively lets me max out my Jackery 500's input perfectly. I've got my Tusk little camp chair. There's a jack stand that stays in here and that helps when changing the wheels out because the tires do go out on these fairly often. Typically 15,000 miles is what I get out of a tire but you can get those tires for like 10 to 20 bucks so they're just it's not a problem. Paper towels, a big big tool bag right here. It is loaded with a bunch of stuff for working on bikes. So you can see in here 
I've just got a lot of tools. Another tool bag with other stuff for working on bikes. Um, electric impact, soldering kit, multimeter, scissors. Why are the scissors? The scissors are not supposed to be in there. We've got a torch, wire strippers, Dremel tool, safety wire, cheapo calipers for rough measurements, crimping tool, etc. You can see. Then right here, I keep a bin inside a bin because this bin has fluids and stuff. Oils, spray cans, that type of stuff that if it leaked, it would be a problem. Keep these uh, tusk fold-up funnels. Those are super handy. I've got a ratio right, other funnels. Uh, got JB Weld and stuff in there. Hanging out loosely right here, I have a little electrical connector kit, which are the actual, um, I don't know what they're called, butt connectors or something, bullet connectors. They're the ones that you find on motorcycles. So I just have that in there. I've got some extra lashing straps. This is my camera slider. Ryo batteries and charger set of tire chains for the forerunner double-a batteries pens because I am always running out of pens and then this is my generator EF 2000 ISV2 inverter generator I obviously don't run it while it is in the bin I simply take it out of the bin under the tire chains there was this 18650 battery charger a propane tank for my torch and then over in this bin this is normally not here this is just an air filter that got taken off during the race and then i've got another little tool bag this actually goes in here and then the rest of this bin is dedicated to my riding gear i have this msr gear bag thank goodness I ended up getting one of these. When I started out in the mobile living situation, I was having some serious problems staying organized, especially with my riding gear. I would have like my boots up in there and then I would have my helmet in the vehicle and then I would have riding gear spread out between various places, just wherever it got thrown and it was becoming a disaster. This MSR gear bag, thank you to Rocky Mountain for sending that to me. It fits perfectly into one of these DeWalt job site boxes. So now what I use this for is I keep all of my riding gear. Every single piece of riding gear always stays in this gear bag. That way it's ready to go and I'm not going to screw up. So in here, several pairs of gloves, a helmet, my camelback. It came with what I think is a dirty laundry bag. Came with this bag and I wasn't sure what it was for but I just started using it for my dirty stuff. So I just got done with a race and you can see I just threw all the stuff that I used in there so that it's separate from the clean stuff and now I'll just pull that out and I'll bring it to the laundry. All the other riding gear stuff down here. <laughs> the so essential flannel. The so essential tank top, of course. Got several pairs of pants down in here. Um, several jerseys. A sweater. Look at that, some riding underwear. And then over here there's a helmet compartment and in there I typically keep a bunch of goggles but all the goggles are dirty from the race so they're not in there. But I usually have three pairs of goggles right here on top and then I have the tear-offs for those goggles right there. And then I have another helmet right in here. And then in this back pouch right here I have my riding boots. So the beauty of this setup and the reason I like it so much and would probably continue to pull this thing around, even if I had a truck with a bed where I could put the bike, uh, the reason I would continue using this setup is because it's all there. Everything I need to go for a ride is all here. Just hook it up to a car, hook it up to the Forerunner, hook it up to a truck whatever. It all stays there. It's all ready to go. If I find myself at a friend's house, we're gonna like truck out to ride or whatever, then I just pull this gear bag out. Pulls on out of that bin and then I'm ready to go that way. So I am thoroughly enjoying the Harbor Freight trailer still. For now, I am probably going to leave the trailer like this, but I do have a goal of upgrading to an enclosed trailer and that is mostly for security purposes. That little trailer 
will always be a bit of a security concern. There's always the potential for someone to literally just cut the tongue off and walk away with it. It's so small and light, you could just take it. Um, yes, I do have it locked to the vehicle, but that is not good enough, because like I said, you could chop off quickly and easily any part of it that is locked, and you could drag it. If I lock the wheels, you could remove the wheels and you could drag it. It's light enough that you could do that. So if I got a bigger enclosed, it would be a lot more secure and that would like really open up some flexibility in my life. Being able to park or store it in storage for weeks at a time when I need to, when I'm not using the riding stuff. Cause as you saw, it is basically the riding trailer. Like everything in there is the riding setup. There's times when I'm not riding when I'm doing other work and such and I don't necessarily want to be dragging the trailer around everywhere but I don't think any of that detracts from the value of that trailer it is so accessible to almost anyone if you've got a car you can tow it it can even expand your ability to use your truck if you wanted to cap your truck camp in the back when you go riding and then you could just bring that trailer around. If I had to, I could totally keep using just that setup. And I will for a while, I'm sure. I'm not anywhere near close to getting it enclosed. They're rather expensive. So I've still got to give the little trailer the credit that it deserves. It opened up a lot of possibilities in my life. It did like change the course of where I was taking my life. Awesome little trailer.